Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And the Bible says we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Petra from the Father and Son Faith Christian Center uh, right here in Southfield, Michigan. And we just want this video to be shared among the Arnold family to let you guys know that we are praying for you guys. We're here to lend our form of support in whatever way possible. And most importantly, to let you all know, if you haven't heard it already, that we love you guys. When I think about your dad, I was thinking about the story between the jeweler and his friends. And uh, this story went on to say that this jeweler had two friends and his two friends were getting ready to get engaged. A man and female was getting ready to get engaged. And so out of, uh, out of uh, um, a favor to his friends, he shuts down his jewelry shop and he invites the couple to come after hours so that they could carefully take their time to pick out the wedding rings that they wanted for one another. When they walk into the shop, uh, the jeweler comes out and he says, first we had to pick the stone. And he opens up this bag of uh, diamonds. And in this bag of diamonds, there's different type of diamonds, different sizes, different cuts, different qualities for clarity as far as the diamond. And he told the woman, I want you to carefully select the one you want because predicated upon the one that you pick will determine the setting and the ring that we pick to go along with it. And so she looked over it, she saw the one that caught her eye, she pointed it out, and the jeweler picks up this rare stone. He says, there was never one made like this stone before. He said, it's uh, one of a kind. You're not gonna see duplicates among the rest of the diamonds here. He says, but I want you to take this stone. He says, now I usually don't do this, but I'm going to lend this stone to you for a short time while we're picking out the setting of your ring uh, and the type of style of ring you wanted. He said, because it's so expensive, and it's so valuable. I usually don't display or give possession to my clients um, about this diamond. And so he gives the woman the diamond. The, he told the woman, hold on to it for dear life. Do not let go of it because I cannot afford for you to lose this precious diamond that is one of a kind. And then they spent the rest of the duration of the time inside of the jewelry store looking for a ring that would fit the stone and the setting that they could, could adapt it in. That was about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. When they finally have agreed on what type of ring that they picked for one another, the jeweler asked for that precious stone back. He said, I know you had it for a short time. He said, I hope that you held on to it for dear life. He says, but I'm going to need that stone back in order to put together the perfect wedding ring that you guys wanted so that you will see this diamond again on your wedding day. And so she opens up her hand. The jeweler takes the stone away from her and he, uh, goes on to do his thing with the stone. We fast forward, they go out to dinner later on that day and the lady asks to be excused. She goes to the restroom to wash her hands and then getting the soap to put on her hands, she opens her hands and she sees the, the imprint of the stone that she had held on to for that very long time. It's the imprint um, embedded inside of her hand. She thought that that was remarkable. She washed her hands, the imprint was still there. So she runs to the table and she tells her soon to be husband, her fiance, look, even though the stone has been taken away from me, she says, I still have the imprint in my hand. And uh, I, when I thought about that story, I thought about your dad because your dad, Ray Arnold Jr. was one of a kind. There was only one Ray Arnold Jr. And although God the jeweler had to come take his precious stone back, what we appreciate is the fact that you guys had him for the length of time that you had him. And only people who see the value in others hold on to them with a form of endearment because they understand how valuable and how precious the life of Ray Arnold Jr. was. They held on to him. You guys held on to your dad. People in your community held on to your dad. And all the time while you guys were holding on to your dad and what came along with your dad, whether it was the, the conversations, the wisdom he shared, the experiences that you guys embraced, what you guys don't realize is although God came and took your dad, you guys still have the imprint of your dad seared into your hearts. Your dad probably left sayings with you guys or it was certain things that's going to remind you of your dad, certain things that happen that's going to make you say, man, dad would do that. Sometimes there's going to be certain situations you're going to be in and you say, what would dad do? And the beautiful thing about this is that for the time that you had your dad, because you all saw value in your dad, you held on to him because you understood how significant it was to hold on to somebody who was so precious, who was so rare, and who was so one of a kind. Just like that jeweler took that stone back from the lady who had him for a certain amount of time, God came and took Ray Arnold Jr. back. 
He, get, he only lent them to you guys for a certain period of time. But there comes a time in life where we all got to go this way, where the jeweler named God will come back and he will request his precious stone to come back into his possession. But the shouting news that I received about the story was that the woman never argued when she had to give the stone back to the jeweler because here's what she realized, and I want you all to hang on to this, was that one day she was going to reunite with that precious stone on her wedding day. She did not have a problem giving it back to the one who lended it to her for a short time. Because she understood that one day I'm going to reunite, watch this, with that stone on my wedding ring forever. Can I tell you today that although dad is not physically here with us, he still left a mark in our lives that can never be erased. He left an imprint in our lives that can never be erased. And when I think about it, I get emotional because I also lost my father. And what keeps me moving outside of the, the grace of God and the presence of God is the things that my dad left, the impact that he left in my life that can never be erased. My dad was one of a kind. Your dad was one of a kind. There cannot be another duplicate of Ray Arnold Jr. He was exactly who he was. He was custom made and nobody could duplicate him. But for the time that you guys had, him, I pray that you guys will hang on to the fact that you have memories, you have experiences, you have sayings. You have uh, encounters that you had with your dad that can never be erased. When that stone was removed from that woman's hand, he removed the stone physically, but he did not remove the imprint. Your father may not be here physically, but the imprint is still in your life. When you see Ray, you see Ray Ar uh, Arnold Jr. When you see uh, Tony, you see your dad. When you see Sonya, you see your dad. The legacy lives on. People get a chance to see Ray Arnold Jr. through the expression of his three beautiful children. And I know that your dad was proud of you. And as the old folks will say, if we live right, here's why I'm not totally tripping. Because if we live right, we'll get a chance to see that precious gem again named Ray Arnold Jr. We'll get a chance to be reunited with him forever. That's the moral of the whole story, is that she had it for a short time, but she held on to it for dear life because she seen the value in what she was holding. You all held on to your dad, y'all served him, y'all honored him, uh, y'all paid homage to him, y'all relationship was amazing, and although he's not physically here, God took him back to be with him. The imprint of what your dad left in y'all life, the impact that he made for the time that he was in y'all life will never be erased. And although he's with God, one day, if we live right, we'll reunite with God and Ray Arnold uh, Jr. again. Good day, Arnold family. I want you all to be encouraged uh, that I would say that it would get easier, but there's moments where I find myself pulling over to the side of the road because I think about how good my dad was, how excellent of a role model he was, how big of a hero he was for me. And I thank God that he allowed me to experience my dad for the time that I had him. I'm 38 years old. My dad died when I was 37. I thank God and I cherish 37 years of being able to have somebody amazing in my life that left an impact and an imprint in my heart that will never be erased. And so with the duration that I have here on this earth, I'm going to spend it giving it my best, cherishing every moment, every memory, every experience, and every word that my father shared. I'm going to honor him. I'm going to live. I'm going to continue the legacy so that when my time is up, I want to live in such a way that my children will have something to hang on to and remember and reflect. And when my time is up here on earth, to be absent from the body, the Lord says, is to be present with the Lord. I get a chance to reunite with my dad again. And in the, in the words of the songwriter, reunite it, and it feels so good. When I get a chance to see my dad again, oh, what a time we're going to have. And I know that that's going to be an amazing thing for you guys to reunite with your dad uh, one day. Um, but until then, listen, count it all joy. Know that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to cry. It's okay to go through mixed emotions. Um, that's all part of the grieving phase, and everyone grieves differently. Um, but what a man. Special shouts out to Ray Arnold Jr. and the impact that he not only made in his children's lives, but from what I hear, the community lives, people in the race car world, uh, he's made a phenomenal impact in everybody's lives, and that right there makes him a legend. I honor him on to today. Uh, I give God glory for the life that he allowed us to encounter and to experience. And I even thank God in his sovereignty that he knew exactly when it was time for dad to be called home. Here's what I have to appreciate about our sovereign God. And sovereignty means that God does what he wants, when he wants, and how he wants. 
that I don't question why God took him so fast. Maybe God seen something down the road that your dad shouldn't have had to experience as far as suffering. What we do know in this bittersweet experience is that he's not suffering anymore and he's not sick anymore. That these issues that he had to battle and deal with is no longer an option anymore. The bitter part of it is that the physical presence of dad is not here. I can't run in the room and see him or hear his voice. But what I hold on to in closing is the mere fact that he left an imprint and an impact in my heart that should never be compromised or erased. This is Pastor Peter, really your brother. I know I have not met Tony and Sonya directly, but your brother bragged so much on y'all and hold y'all in one of the highest regards that I feel like I grew up with y'all. I love y'all, man, and I mean that. Um, Ray, Tony, Sonya, keep your head up. Continue to trust in the Lord, even when you don't understand him and can't trace him. And just realize that God is in control. You have a Detroit family here that is praying for you guys around the clock the moment we found out Dad was sick. And we are here to lend our hands of support all the way from Detroit, Michigan, if you guys need it. We love you guys, and may you guys continue to be blessed. This is Pastor Peter from the Father and Son Faith Christian Center. God bless you.